I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Rodney. Um, he's from he's the president from RSU, and he's going to paint a picture of the situation at Ryerson and Ontario. Uh, hey, folks. So, uh, thank you for your patience and. Uh, and sticking it out for the rest of the event. It's great to see so many warm faces here. Uh, my name is Rodney DeVerlis. I am uh, a fifth year performance dance student here at Ryerson uh, and currently the president of the Ryerson Students Union. Uh, I think um, it's ironic that we are here. If you don't know where you're sitting, this is uh, the Ted Rogers School of Management. Uh, and we are at the largest lecture hall uh, at the Ted Rogers School of Management. Uh, and uh, you know, we're talking about you know, issues you know, of, of capitalism and neoliberalism and uh, you know, just hours before you sat here, uh, students were sitting and being sponges to, uh, to learning about uh, how to be a good capitalist and how to, how to be a good business person. So uh, it's great to see that this space is reclaimed with faces that uh, oftentimes we don't see here. Um, so um, I am just here to talk about really quickly um, context in Ontario for folks. Uh, I know that uh, I'm going to be talking to a lot of ears that have heard this many a times, but uh, we didn't want to make an assumption that everyone came here from the same analysis point. Um, so uh, this event kind of has two titles that are uh, that that have been circulated around. Uh, one that you um, that you you know you a lot of you are familiar with, or you know, lessons from Quebec. Uh, but we also uh, wanted to make sure that we have the perspectives um, from different places like Wisconsin and Chile, uh, as well as in Ontario, to talk about education being in crisis. Uh, and in Ontario, uh, I get asked this all the time, is education in crisis? Or is this just something that has happened uh, for many years onwards that we're just complaining about as students? Um, so I just wanted to read out some stats for folks just to lay the context out. And again, like I said, to make sure that everyone is coming into this uh, with the same perspectives, and particularly the folks who aren't from Ontario, uh, so we all know about where, uh, where we're talking from. So uh, Ontario has the highest tuition fees in Canada, uh, and uh, average tuition fees right now are $7,180. Uh, when I started here at Ryerson, I paid $4,900, uh, and I'm still here for two more years. Uh, we also have the lowest per student funding of any province in Canada. Uh, we have about 10,000 per student, uh, and uh, that's in contrast to uh, 25,000 uh, at its highest in a different province. Uh, and we have the second lowest per student funding of any uh, place actually in North America, second only to Alabama. Um, we uh, have <laughs> Alabama. Uh, we have uh, the highest uh, student to faculty uh, ratio of anywhere in uh, Canada, 26 to 1. Um, tuition fees have increased up to 71% uh, in the last six years. Uh, they've also increased 300% uh, over the rate of inflation. Uh, student debt is now sitting comfortably at $37,000. Uh, $37, uh, that's a mortgage for many of us. 95% uh, of graduate students can't access Ontario graduate scholarships. Uh, we now are seeing our institutions be uh, less than 50% of the money are coming from uh, public dollars as opposed to 80% uh, in the early 1990s. Uh, student debt in Ontario is at $9 billion. Uh, and most recently, uh, we've actually seen um, you know, an introduction of uh, uh, of, a, of a grant uh, by our governing party, uh, but at the same time cuts to nine uh, major grants and scholarships. Uh, and I'm talking about things like the Queen uh, Elizabeth Scholarship that you know, gave myself and many other students uh, up to $4,000 to come to school, um, but also the Work Study Program, uh, which essentially is a program for low-income students like myself uh, to work uh, and then uh, on campus and get paid for it. Uh, so the provincial portion of the Work Study Program has been cut. Uh, so to any student here uh, at Ryerson, but also in Ontario, when you ask them, uh, is education in crisis, their answer will be yes. We are number one of any province in the country, uh, but not in any great things, right? We are number one in anything else uh, that is the markers for inaccessible education. So um, oftentimes in the last couple of months, I've had a chance to speak uh, you know, with students, uh, get questioned by the media, and uh, the question is, you know what, like, well, all of this is happening uh, in Ontario. You know, we see what's happening in Quebec. We see what's happening in these different countries. Why aren't students mobilizing? You know? like, why, 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 why aren't students doing anything? Um, so I, I'm going to talk about some lessons that uh, I draw from different movements, but the 
First of all, I also want to um, put the record straight, you know, that students, that labor, that community members in Ontario have been mobilizing uh, and have been doing work. And um, for, you know, for students who are first year who, are, uh, who took a leaflet and then went out to a protest or uh, somebody in their fourth year who just signed a petition and did nothing, uh, those are different forms of mobilization, right? So these mass mobilizations that have happened in different places have grown from some place. So uh, we have to give credit for uh, the people who've taken to the streets and give credit for the people who've done work in the past. But what is missing? What is missing and what's, uh, what's keeping us in Ontario from uh, having 200,000 people in the streets, 300,000 people in the streets? Um, I think uh, the lessons from, uh, from Chile, from Wisconsin, from UK, from Quebec, from around the world are things that um, we can draw on from the movement, but we have to go a step further. Uh, we have to learn of things that have worked, uh, but also be critical of the things that haven't worked and, uh, in hopes of building uh, a stronger and more united student movement here in Ontario. So uh, there's a couple of things that I've noted, uh, and I've kind of uh, written them down as I've been, you know, the many times I've listened to Valentina, uh, listening to Gabrielle, listening to Chloe, listening to Tina, and listening uh, over the last couple of days, I've written them down, and um, I'm sure there are many others that people have drawn on. So I think the very first thing is, uh, you know, the concept of patience. Uh, these are things that we hear about over and over again. Uh, you know, when we hear about, you know, the outburst of a movement, when we, uh, when we hear about the 50 plus thousand people in Wisconsin that, you know, that, that took over the legislature, we hear about it when it gets to that number, but we actually uh, oftentimes forget to think about um, the, uh, the step one till, uh, you know, the final step of the, uh, of the big actions, right? So uh, myself, I am uh, I'm of Haitian background and uh, I take pride in my Haitian roots. And one of the things that we learn a lot in, uh, in, uh, in our, our secondary schooling and also elementary schooling is the idea of patience, right? And the idea that you can actually topple, uh, uh, you can topple of government, you can topple policies, you can uh, dismantle systems and structures uh, only when you have patience and only when you um, take it one day at a time. Um, I think the second big thing that I take from it is um, that, you know, arguments will happen, right? So uh, we are, I think, are in a major shift in Ontario right now because we're at the point where we're saying enough is enough uh, and that uh, there will be arguments from, uh, you know, different tactics to use, different beliefs as to how to change our structures and uh, they will be awkward, uh, but they will be necessary. Um, I think, you know, we're all at different stages of our analysis and uh, many of us can sit here and articulate about, you know, uh, how, um, you know, how detrimental neoliberalism may be. Uh, but if you're talking to a first year student, you know, even for my program back when I was in first year, if you just came to me and just said that and told me, are you ready? I would be like, what are you talking about, right? Um, so at the end of the day, you know, as Gabriel mentioned, uh, there has to be a point of contact and we have to make sure that we're speaking to, uh, to people and particularly in students with languages that they can understand and uh, languages that they can access. And I also think that we have to make sure that uh, we're not shaming each other for being in different levels of analysis and uh, making sure that we're not creating uh, levels and structures of hierarchies even within our movements uh, of, of pinning, you know, some as radical and some as not, uh, when we're all actually just having the, the necessary discourse and the necessary arguments to, uh, to come about to help build a stronger movement. Uh, I think... Um, I think third, one of the big things that uh, I've taken from this uh, is that while we learn from these different movements, we in Ontario uh, are not Chile. We are not Wisconsin. We are not Quebec. We are not the UK. Uh, we are Ontario, right? So we have different contexts. We have different uh, histories. We have different realities that exist. And we have different students and different people. Uh, so we have to make sure that we're actually going back to listening to our own people and taking lessons from different movements, but uh, working to build a unique movement that will, uh, that will mobilize ourselves and uh, will empower people within this province to take, uh, to take action for, uh, for our education. Um, I also think that, you know, there is space for everyone in the mobilizing. Um, so, uh, you know, here at Ryerson, the Arts and Contemporary Students, uh, Students Union, is there anyone else here from ACS? Yeah, ACS. Uh, ACS had their first General Assembly uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they had 16 people come out, and, uh, you know, they talked to Howard Eagles, right? And ACS... You know, it, it, they were talking about very local things. They were talking about things that, that really mattered to, to arts and contemporary students at the, at the moment, and these are things that they're hoping to do. And, you know, different course unions have, uh, have talked about the, the desire to do certain things like that, right? So, um, you know, whether you are an executive of a student's union or a student's association or a course union, uh, or you are a first-year student, or you are a community uh, member or uh, a labor organizer, um, are you going to tell me I spoke too fast? No. Okay, good. But I was speaking too fast. <laughs> but yes, I should slow down. Um, these are things, and within this movement, there's a space for all of us, and we have to make sure that we're carving out the space and making sure that we're all included. 
Um, I think one of the big things also within the concepts of uh, we are not these places, um, you know, I was sitting here and I'm like, I've listened to Valentina speak for three times. Uh, I've heard, um, you know, heard Gabriel speak many times, I've heard Chloe speak many times, and I think that, you know, um, while we are, you know, working to learn from different movements, uh, I'm starting to think to myself, I'm like, Rodney, I need to stop coming to these events unless I'm gonna bring someone else with me, right? Uh, because we, uh, we I've, I've, you know, I've been seeing in the last couple of months that we're, we're having the necessary discourse and uh, the necessary discussions to learn from movements, but we keep it just there and we're not taking it to the next level. Level, right? So if we're just talking to ourselves, and if we're just listening to each other, and if we're just listening to people who've done fantastic work, and we're not talking about what we need to do in Ontario, then there's no point, right? There's no point of coming to these events, and there's no point of listening to them, because uh, to some extent, we're not talking about the work that we need to do uh, here. And I think for myself, one of the biggest things that, um, that I've been learning from listening to different movements, and I've been trying to think of how I can integrate more within our own movements here in Ontario, is this concept of you know, building an inclusive student movement. And what actually that means for building an inclusive student movement, right? Um, I think uh, myself, I have um, uh, my background before I came to the student movement was, you know, looking at like anti-racism work and looking at, you know, racism and how it uh, it's perpetuated within uh, our own um, our, our, our systems and our structures. Um, but I think that we need to actually this is where we need to do self-critical work to actually look at how our movement is inclusive and how our movement is actually not inclusive, is not accessible for a lot of people. And that requires us looking at ourselves and that, looks, that requires us looking at the ways that we organize. You know, I think it's even look, turn around and look around in this room, right? Uh, and this is a reflection of actually of other spaces that, uh, that, we, that we go to and a lot of spaces that, you know, myself even uh, as a person of color and a racialized person that goes to, sometimes I'm questioning, you know, myself to be like, what is it about the messaging that we're doing? What is it about the work that we're doing? What is it about the things that we are doing that still don't bring out certain voices? When we know that we're talking about access to education, for myself, access to education is, um, you know, we always use the term class warfare, you know, we talk about, you know, neoliberalism and period, like all of these things. I think at the end of the day for myself, they are true for sure. Access to education uh, is, is an equity issue, right? And uh, access to education is talking about the, uh, the different voices of people who actually are not, uh, disproportionately not able to access uh, the same education that we're all talk, uh, we all are accessing. You know, right? So I'm talking about, you know, indigenous folks. Uh, you know, I'm talking about indigenous folks and their lack of um, ability to, um, to take up the, you know, PSSP, the post-secondary student support uh, program. Uh, and uh, I'm talking about racialized folks who uh, are uh, already, uh, already making 86 cents for the dollar, um, you know, that non-racialized folks are, but already, because of the amount of loans that disproportionately we take up, are going to have to pay a 1.5 times the amount of tuition fees that everyone else has. I'm talking about queer and trans folks, particularly uh, trans, uh, trans students who um, you know, already in, in, are not able to access things like healthcare uh, and housing, uh, and, and our uh, poverty rates are disproportionately higher than cisgendered uh, folks, uh, women, uh, disabled folks, deaf, mad identified people. I think that these are, um, these are things that oftentimes are brought up and there's usually this silence and there's usually this like, oh gosh, why did you have to bring it there? Uh, but we have to actually look at where are those, you know, where sometimes are these faces within the movement, and uh, where are these faces um, when we're talking about uh, these issues, and where are these faces, uh, and where are these faces uh, when when we're talking about, you know, taking the streets and taking over uh, our um, our education. I actually I think that. Um, I think the tuition fees are, are, are horrible and are bad, uh, but uh, above all, uh, tuition fees are sexist, tuition fees are racist, tuition fees are violent for certain uh, bodies and certain identities, tuition fees are exploitative for certain identities. Um, and I think that, um, I, I think that, that is what is, is, is what I'm hearing in Ontario. And these are the things that I hear from when I talk to students uh, down in the halls. It's about their experiences from their own identities. And these are the things that if we actually want to build a stronger movement, if we actually want to build, build a really inclusive movement that includes people, we have to take into consideration. And uh, we have to see it not as a way of resisting uh, the common discourse, but has to be included in the, in the messaging and our asks and our demands. I think that, you know, uh, as students, our work has just begun. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. 
done and there's a lot of work that we, uh, we all can take on. Uh, I think that there's going to be a lot of challenges ahead, but above all, uh, we have to make sure that we as a student movement here in Ontario uh, are united. And we as a student movement in Ontario are willing to have the arguments, are willing to have the debates, are willing to disagree with each other on tactics, are willing to disagree on the ways that we want to do things, but acknowledge that at the end of the day, we have to do it together. Otherwise, uh, there will only, uh, only be certain fragments of people doing the same work. Uh, I think that you know the work that you the the the, the quote that you mentioned, Tina, about resistance breeds resistance, is uh, something that I, I wrote down, and I was like, yeah, that's true, right? Uh, and we have to look and and, uh, and congratulate ourselves on the work that we've done, but acknowledge that it's it's not enough, uh, and that uh, things are getting dire, and things are getting to a point where uh, we are going to spiral, and we are already spiraling out of control, and uh, the badger. Uh, document it sounds very much like you know the strengthening Ontario Centers for Creativity, Innovation, and Knowledge, the discussion paper that came out, right? So there's a lot of things that are actually happening at a parallel to many uh, of our brothers and sisters at, at different provinces and different countries. Uh, but we have to make sure that we're going back to our uh, to our to our, our classrooms, making sure we're going back to uh, to the hallways, also the streets, right, and our different community groups to uh, to build a stronger uh, and more united movements uh, here in Ontario. So um, all the speakers are going to be uh, here afterwards. So uh, if folks have any questions whatsoever, I'm sure uh, everyone will be uh, more than happy to answer them. Thank you.